Well, the United Nations has designated 2025 the International Year of Quantum Science and Technology. And today is a particularly important moment for that observance as April 14th marks World Quantum Day. Now, that is aimed at promoting public awareness and understanding of quantum science and technology worldwide. Quantum mechanics is the fundamental theory describing the behavior of the elementary particles and forces that shape our universe. And while it sounds abstract, it's, it influences, of course, the technologies behind the objects that many of us use in our daily lives, with the potential to further revolutionize numerous sectors from medicine, communications, and, of course, computing. For more on this, Ivan Maximov joins us on the program today. He is an associate professor uh, in physics and machine, of pr physics and machine uh, learning lead with the Artificial Intelligence and Cyber Futures Institute at Charles Stutt University in Australia. Thank you very much for joining us today, uh, Ivan. So uh, to get started, I think over the past few years, there's been talk of a veritable quantum computing revolution. So can you give us just a very basic explanation of what quantum mechanics is and how it could at least theoretically be used to revolutionize computer science? Yes. Uh, first of all, thank you for having me. Yes, like, like we all, like, all know that uh, computers use bits, zeros and one. But uh, quantum computers can have uh, bits that are called qubits, quantum bits, that can be zeros, ones, and a superposition of zeros and one. That is uh, a difficult to understand concept, but it's in the core of quantum computing, and that allows us to compute things that uh, no classical computer can do in ages. So in terms of the potential to, to change our lives then, in what fields do you think that the scientific community is likely to make the quickest progress uh, in quantum technologies? Quantum technologies can help in many fields. I would say that one of the first fields will be medical research, drug discovery, and also safe uh, uh, communication. So you pioneer research specifically in quantum neural networks. Can you talk about some of the fields that you hope your research can have an impact on and why you chose that specific domain? I chose that, that uh, domain because it's, it's uh, quite exciting because like we all use AI now, yes, but it's um, it's like capabilities, they are a bit far from what humans can do. I believe that quantum AI systems can be more human-like. That's why I'm so excited to do uh, this uh, uh, type of research. But I think that the quantum neural networks can also help in drug discovery, in medical research, in the discovery of new materials and so forth. So from a strategic uh, point of view, Ivan, for now at least, who are the world's uh, quantum superpowers, so to speak, or at least where is most of the progress uh, being made? So, yeah, it's, it's currently the United States, uh, Europe, China, India, and other countries who uh, have active uh, programs. But I'm actually very glad to hear that uh, smaller countries are in the race. So I heard about uh, new AI systems and the quantum computers that are developed in uh, by African countries, in, um, in Asia, and uh, in the countries that you would not expect to be the leaders in AI technologies. But it's quite an exciting time because many research uh, com like, uh, companies can do quantum computing now. So what, what do you think? I mean, you, you mentioned China and the United States notably as, as some of the biggest kind of quantum uh, uh, superpowers. Uh, what do you think their priorities are right now? I know you talk, talked quite a bit uh, about things like medicine and, and, and other research areas where, where quantum mechanics is, is interesting in making progress. But is that what countries like the United States and China are focusing on? And can you perhaps talk a bit about the way that quantum computing can affect things like cryptography, which I imagine can affect, you know, almost anyone? Uh, who uses the internet? Yes, of course. Uh, you're right, and uh, it's a cryptography, and it can also have like dual use applications. That's why these countries are very interested in these uh, technologies. I think that uh, it's for many a reason. It's, um, it's of course practical use, but it's also prestige of uh, you know having that quantum uh, quantum uh, supremacy. So yes, yeah. 
What do you think some of the biggest barriers are, at least right now, to turning hopes and expectations about quantum computing into reality? Is it is are they financial barriers? Are they epistemological? Are they political? Uh, where 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 does more work need to be done? It's a complex of problems because it's a very complex technology. It's a fragile. It requires often the cryogenic temperatures. And um, it's quite expensive. So we are working uh, uh, on on more, you know, like affordable systems that would be smaller and would be cheaper and that would be used uh, like personally. So currently, it's mostly professionals who work at the universities and uh, research organizations who have access to quantum technologies. But I believe that in the future, maybe in 10 years, we will have something that is a quantum computer, like a chip, like similar to what we currently use in. Uh, desktop and uh, laptop computers. But another problem is a uh, political one because uh, it's a vital technology that will shape the future in the 21st century. So it's important to you know control this technology and have access to you know all knowledge that is uh, um, like like uh, uh, behind that. So uh, I think that from one hand it's important that the researchers collaborate uh, between countries and but from the other hand it's important that every country has has a sovereign technology so, so speaking of the importance of, of cooperation and, and financing, which you also briefly mentioned, uh, observers say that the Trump administration, of course, is waging a war of sorts on science. Given that you said that the United States has, at least until now, uh, been, you know, dominant in this industry, how might the Trump administration affect the United States' role in this kind of quantum technology race? Yeah, um of course, uh, it's a question that would mostly be like addressed by an expert in the geopolitics. But what I think that uh, currently it's of course damaging because um, uh, those like uh, sanctions and uh, you know like political um, uh, measures they affect scientific research because scientists cannot collaborate, scientists can lose job, and it's also like cuts in the funding. But um, it's in a uh, short-term perspective. In the long-term uh, perspective, I think that like it's become, it's perhaps counterintuitive. But like we can benefit from that because I believe that smaller countries will start to work on own technologies. So more people, more scientists will be working on new technologies, and that will bring like uh, more, more, uh, more ideas and uh, diversity uh, to the table. As a final question for you, sir, um, what do you think are some of the major ethical concerns or even security risks about the way that quantum technologies might be used uh, in the future? Yeah, it's, um, it's a very good uh, question. I'm concerned that um, especially AI systems that are used uh, like based on quantum technologies may become uh, like like are really smart, like um, humans. So, and that poses a significant uh, concerns. And it's also my concern that if uh, quantum computers are used by uh, uh, non-state actors, such as like you know, like like for like uh, like bad bad uh, purposes. So, uh, I think that quantum computing uh, technologies should be controlled, and because. It, if they're used by people who have bad intentions, then we can have problems, yes. Ivan Maximov, thank you so very much for coming on the show today for World Quantum Day. Thank you for having me.